Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. If you're new here, a few years ago I started a project around an open source pick and place machine, and then shortly after that I started a company around selling them. If you'd like to start the whole saga from the beginning, you can click here to catch up. There is an entire part of making the Lumen PMP that I have literally never talked about before. Making cable harnesses. If you're building stuff that has electrical stuff here and electrical stuff here, you're gonna need something to make them talk, to make them connect together. And the Lumen has a lot of those. There are six motors on the machine, two pumps, two cameras, two valves, locations for 50 different feeders. There are a lot of cables in the machine. But how the heck do you design a cable harness? Like if you wanna make a 3D model, you crack open FreeCAD and you design your 3D part and you get a STL or a step file out of that that you could print or send to a manufacturer, great. KiCad, same kind of thing for PCBs. You can export your Gerbers, get them fabbed at a facility, good stuff. But how do you make cables? Well, there's actually a lot of different things out there for designing cable harnesses. A lot of them are very expensive or part of some other design suite of software. And then there's a ton of big industrial stuff, which is cool for that, but doesn't really fill that mid-scale niche very well. But what we use is WireViz. WireViz is the coolest damn piece of software. It is a command line tool that generates these beautiful cable harness drawings. Like, look at this. This was, this was generated from a command line tool automatically. How cool is that? And here's the really awesome part, the source for it, like what the command line tool uses to figure out how to make that image is a YAML file which is like JSON if you're not familiar. It's just like a human readable kind of code file, usually used for like configuration. And because of that, we can track it in Git so easily, which I am unhealthily obsessed with doing. <laughs> I love tracking things with Git so much. So with WireViz, we can actually design our cable harnesses and track them in Git along with the rest of the source for the Lumen PMP. So we've actually already been using WireViz to design all the cable harnesses for the Lumen for the past like two years. I honestly, I don't know why I have not talked about it yet. Like it's such an important part of this. I kind of, I don't know why. I kind of can't believe I haven't mentioned it before. So if we go to the Lumen repo and under CAD, we go to the CHA folder for cable harness assembly. There's a bunch of YAML files in there and you click into it and like, it's just kind of a bunch of random information that seems tangentially related to a cable harness. But if you actually run that YAML file through WireViz, it shows up to be a beautiful image like this. But today I need to change all of these to fit with the new cable harness structure that we're using for the next version of the machine. We now have two cable chains and we're also kind of compacting some stuff into one connector and we're doing a couple little tweaks. We're also changing to the pH standard connector. So the cable harness drawings need to be updated. And also I want to make a GitHub action for WireViz. So if you don't know, GitHub actions are these automatic things that will run every time you make a commit and push to GitHub. It's like, it will spin up a little virtual machine and do tasks for you automatically every time you push to a branch or you ask it to on GitHub or even making a release. We have actually written a ton of actions on the Lumen PMP repo that automatically export STLs of every single part in the machine, Gerbers of every single PCB in the machine, and even generate a full like website bill of materials for every single version or commit that you ask it to do. With links to purchase and rendered images of the source as of that commit, we set up a ton of stuff to just click a button and it automatically exports all these things for us. It's really cool. It currently does not have support for exporting WireViz, so I wanna add a WireViz generation and export also to the Lumen PMP repo. This is actually part of a much larger project that I'm working on of making some kind of standardized GitHub action that automatically exports all of the source for an open hardware project. I wanna make it so someone can just run a single simplified GitHub action of export. And as long as they have FreeCAD files, KiCAD files, WireViz, or any other type of source that we can export from GitHub, it will automatically render a bill of materials, make official release notes, give you all the STLs and Gerbers ready to order. If any of y'all are familiar with different like methods of trying to standardize bill of materials, I'm aware of a few projects, but please let me know of any that you're aware of in the comments. I wanna make sure I'm not duplicating any effort and ideally to collaborate with some other people thinking about doing the same kind of like bomb project structure standardization thing to be able to just have these clean, beautiful exports. And ideally a little web viewer where you can just see the version of a piece of hardware on a little website that pulls all the source from GitHub. Oh, how cool would that be? How cool? I really wanna make that. Anyway. 
this is currently how we make cable harnesses. It's actually one half of an incredibly long jig that Lucian made. And this thing's job is to make sure that all of the cables inside the cable chain are at the correct length and spaced appropriately so that they're all gonna plug in correctly. It's actually really cool. Each of these little jigs has a spring on it. There's a rigid mount on the other side and then there's a dynamic mount here so we can actually pull them in and they'll pull them taut to make sure that everything is tensioned and appropriately where it should be along the length of the cable chain which we bolt in along the extrusion. It even has mounts for pneumatic fittings to go in there too and springed as well. Now this is a really, really cool jig and it's worked well for us for like a year and a half, but it's still kind of a pain in the ass to have to do this. The more that we can have our cable harnesses be pre-lengthened and at the appropriate spacing and all that kind of stuff, the better. The more unified we can get it manufactured, the better. So we're actually gonna try and combine a lot of the individual separate cables into as many like bulked harnesses as we can. We don't sit there and crimp every single one of these connectors ourselves. We have a vendor that has these big fancy machines that does it for us. And we get them all individually like this. This is just for one thing that we wanna to connect to the motherboard, this one cable. It'd be really cool if instead we had like five connectors on the end of this one cable and they all go to one general broad area of the machine, like the head. And then there's five connectors coming out the other side and all those go to different ports on the motherboard, but it's just one cable that we have to worry about routing. Way easier. Quick interjection. There are two days left before the open source call for exhibitors is closed. If you have a cool project that you wanna show off at open source, you got two days left from the time this video comes out, April 13th on Saturday. Bring it to open source. If you bring something, you get in for free and you get to come to the creator like party the night before the event that Friday. There's a link in the description to go sign up and bring something wacky you built. Do it, click the link, come to open source. Every attendee gets one free heckle at me if you come. Anyway, back to cables. The best way of knowing what cables I actually have to design is by making a system diagram. These are invaluable when you're actually starting to go through and do most of the engineering work for what you're making. Making a like high level system diagram of what it is that you actually are going to make is really helpful for making sure that you don't forget about an aspect of it and that it all kind of logically makes sense to you before you actually start designing it. So this is the system diagram for the V4 Lumen. And it's just a bunch of wires and boxes pretty much, but this tells me exactly everything that I need to make so that everything talks together well and it's all, all the infrastructure set up. So at the heart of the thing is the control box that has the motherboard in it which is this big green box right here. And also inside this box are the two pumps, the two valves, and the pneumatic splitters. So I have a blue and red tubing here drawn out as well. So I also kind of have pneumatics in the system diagram. And I can see here that I need two separate cables for each of the valves. And then I have one harness that's gonna connect two of the MOSFETs on the motherboard to the two pumps. So that's three cables total that are just gonna be inside the box. And then it gets a little bit more complicated. <laughs> we can see on the motherboard, I have a whole bunch of different interfaces. So we have the RS485, five transceiver for talking with feeders, uh, stepper drivers for all the motors, a port for the XY limit switches and the Z limit switch, uh, level shifters for the ring lights. And then here, these are the drag chains. So in the Y drag chain, we have the X cable harness, which goes to the XY limit PCB and the X motor. And we also have a bunch of stuff running through it that then goes to the X drag chain. You can see there's a whole head cable harness, a top camera cable and two pneumatic lines. And then this is the head, which has a bunch of stuff going on. Top camera, top ring light, L and R motor, Z motor, and then a Z limit switch PCB, which we're actually designing from scratch this time. And it even has a little auxiliary connector. So there'll be an extra pin you can do random stuff with that's on the head. So if you want to design a cool RGB LED cover that ports into it, you can do that. You want to have a pin for toggling a programmer that's on the head and you adapt the machine to program your boards after they're done. You can do that too. And then we have all the four blades, which is actually how the feeders communicate back to the machine. There are PCBs that mount onto the front and back of the machine. And the host computer, which gets the USB cable for G-code and then two cameras. And what's nice about this is as long as this is fully featured, I know that if I've looked at everything here, I'm not missing a cable. It's a really good way to make sure that I, I have the full scope of what I'm making defined really well. So now that I have these all defined and I know all the cables I need to make, I'm gonna go through in WireViz and I'm going to design all of them and make beautiful cable harness drawings for all of these little lines. Every black line here is gonna be a cable harness in some way, shape or form. Time to write some YAML.
So I have my X harness all working and ready to go. And if you look, our X harness actually has a couple things going on in it. We need our XY limit PCB and our X motor to connect to our XY limit port on the motherboard and the X stepper driver. So that's what this cable harness has to do. We're making this here. So if I just write wire viz and then X harness and then X harness.yaml, it will actually generate the PNG. There's a bunch of errors that trigger it. It still renders it okay, but <laughs> I'll show you what that is in a second. So here, if we click on this PNG, here's the drawing. This is ultimately what this YAML file generates. So I can dictate what type of wire I wanna use, what gauge, how long it has to be, how many actual conductors in there, and even what color they should be. And then here I have a label. So I actually have this little picture that I photoshopped of a connector with a little bit of heat shrink label on it and saying what should be printed on it. And then a even a little picture of the connector that I ultimately want in the end and which wire goes to which signal and which pin in the connector. Now, the reason that I got all these errors is because I'm doing something kind of weird here that WireViz isn't meant to do. I'm connecting one wire to another wire directly. WireViz kind of expects that you're going to do wire connector, wire connector. And I don't want that. I want to have a main bundle of the cables and then I want to have it split out. And then from there, each split should have a different length conductor as well. But there really wasn't a way to do that in WireViz. So I made a fake connector. You can even see here, see this little weird gap between each wire. This is kind of based on something that uh, some folks in the WireViz uh, GitHub were talking about in a couple of the issues because other people have run into this as well. And they made like a little fake connector that we just call X and it's zero type. You ignore it in the bomb. You just connect everything to X and it kind of generates what you need it to do. And you can dictate how long the split should be before it gets to the connector. So it was kind of a weird pain in the butt figuring this out. Uh, it'd be really cool to add that feature into WireViz so you don't get all these weird errors and it doesn't even actually generate all the other files it's supposed to. It doesn't even make the SVG. It's a bit of a hack, but we got a cool connector. This is something that we could send to our vendor and they would make it to spec as we specify in this with the certain lengths between each connector and what, how is it labeled and all that kind of stuff. So now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna make blade jumper, blade two to blade three, and all these other ones, all these other cable harnesses so that we can have the full spread ready to send to our cable vendor. It's been a few days, but I'm done. I made all of the cable harnesses in GraphViz and I built the CI for GitHub. So here we are in the Lumen repo. If I go to actions, I go to export cable harness diagrams and I run the workflow from the active branch where I'm doing all the dev and I hit run workflow. Now it spins up a Linux container or VM somewhere in GitHub servers. And now it's cloning the repository to that VM. Now it's installing WireViz in that VM. And then I wrote, oh, and there's done. Wow, that's fast. <laughs> I wrote a bash script that just goes through every directory in the CHA folder in the repo, and it just runs WireViz on the file, the YAML file in that folder. All right, so now it's done. If we go back and we click on the run, attached is Lumen PNP cables. And if I click on it, and there are all of my cables exported from GitHub. I didn't have to run WireViz or install it or anything. GitHub just automatically barfed all this out for me. So I can make this happen every time I push to main, every time we do a release, or like what I just did here, where I can pretty much just click a button on GitHub and it'll do the same thing. And that's it. Lucian has sent the cables out to our cable vendor. I was hoping they'd come in in time for this video to go up, but they didn't. I did, couldn't even get a picture. We asked the vendor if they'd send us something. They couldn't get us a picture before this was gonna go up. But the next video, I'll show y'all what cables actually came as a result of all this. But yeah, that's making cable harnesses for a product, how we do it, the whole CI and everything for how I'm gonna make it automatically export in the future. Good stuff. Well, that's it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to sign up for Open Sauce if you haven't already. You got two days left and it's so fun. I wanna see you there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. making the Lumen P? Lumen, what the heck is the Lumen P? <laughs> that was weird. <laughs>